The guy is still leading up. 2015. Cue card is coming! Too close to call! The cue card was an exceptional horse. Never forget it. King George the sixth chase, a win for number three. Cue card! They're those sort of mantelpiece races you want to be winning and you want to be competitive in. To win those type of races, you've got to be on the, your very best form. It's not an easy race to ride in, you know. You've got to be really positive to get your position. Drama! Winter has fallen on Ven Farm. Joe is seeking the benefits of a cold snap. It's a freeze up. I quite like it. We haven't had a freeze up for like a week for a long time. Well, hopefully we'll be able to get a bit of racing, but it doesn't do anything any harm, you know. It just I like it to be fresh for a week. This is brilliant for the horses. And the gallops and that can all be kept going easily. So um, I think it's that's beautiful this time of year. Yeah, well we're two weeks before Christmas, so busy little spell coming up. It's pressing on my mind. I need to know exactly what I'm going to run over Christmas and New Year. Christmas Day being on a Sunday works really well because it's like a normal week. So everybody will come in Christmas morning, get done what we need to do. The runners for like the next two or three days have a glass of port and a mince pie, and then they all go their own way, and, and we sort the rest out. Every horse can be ridden right the way up through, and then then it'll just be runners, Boxing Day, Welsh National. It's all hands on deck during the festive period and Joe relies heavily on his loyal staff, such as Hamir. I've been here 15 years now. I come before Newmarket, and flat racing, I don't like it, and that's why I come in dump racing. Yeah. Last time I see him dump racing. I'm looking for ways of gate, ways of gate. Suddenly, that thing come off, and my friend said, that's dump racing. And I want more to learn and learn and learn. That's why I love it jump racing, yeah. My job is to ride out and then look after horses. I feel morning also, it's at 5 o'clock every morning. Every summer I go home. I have to go three, four months because I have two kids. They start their school. They don't want to come home. I ask them, my wife, and she said, no, no. Whenever I ask, she said, you come back, I don't want to go there. Uh, I'm just like an English man now, anything. A horse close to Hermia's heart is Ven Farm's most decorated athlete, retired racehorse, Q Card. The guy started leading up 2015. I love this horse. Number three is Q Card. Ridden by Paddy Brennan for trainer Colin Tizar. It is Vator trying to repel Cucard. Cucard is coming. He's coming hard. Here comes the line. Too close to call. I love him. I died in my best day. I have a good time with him. Yeah, very good time. And the winner of a dramatic feature race of the afternoon, the William Hill King George the Sixth Chase, a win for number three, Cucard. They're those sort of mantelpiece races you want to be winning and you want to be competitive in. And for us to win our first King George, it was a huge thing, a huge card's career. Final preparations are being made to the string of runners. Joe's aiming to deliver his owners a Christmas gift. The big team to go to Kempton and to Chepstow. Eldorado Allen and the King George, the big breakaway in the, in the Welsh National. And then plenty of novice hurdlers, Oscars Elite and the novice chase. I've probably got about eight or nine entered at Wing Canton Boxing Day. But yeah, plenty to run. We'll give them a couple of nice pipe openers this week and then they'll be ready. Owners enjoy visiting Ben Farm and watching their horses on the gallops. Today, unbeknownst to him, Colin has to help out with a bit of that workload. He's in charge. He doesn't know he's got to deal with 30 people for the next three hours. Ask him a thousand questions. 
Yeah, I don't know which one it is. I'm not quite sure. I'm just wasting time having me here. Was Champs Hill in red or yellow? Uh, yellow hat. Oh, there you are, John. Christmas is approaching, a time of year of celebration for many. But for Joe and his family, it's also a time of great reflection. Kim was a huge part of, of growing the yard. You know, that's when Dad was getting his permit. But she was always in, at home in the background. She did it every Sunday on her own. We wouldn't be where we were if it wasn't for Kim's input in this business, as simple as that. She was, like, not very well. And then they removed the cyst, and they thought it was all fine, and it turned out it was cancerous, and the cyst just spread through her body and, and killed her within a month. It's real fast. Tragic. Um, lose your sister, it's, it's not easy, but I was probably in the last sort of four or five years of, of her life, Kim and I were closer than ever. I'd finished riding and we we're back here and working together and, you know, I think it would be me and Kim training now if, um, if she was still around. Christmas and things like that, family days is when it sort of hits home a little bit, but we'll talk about her and we'll just sort of toast her and, but it's always, especially for mum, you know, she'll, she'll get a bit upset at some point, but, you know, we still enjoy it and stick together. It's just a few days before the races. Long-standing owner John Romans is visiting to have one final look at his horses before their rigorous and challenging test. Morning, you all right? Yeah, very well, thank you. You know, he trusts me to do the best that we can for the horses, and, you know, if, if I say I want to go to somewhere, John will go along with it, so it's good. Amarillo Sky wins for Joe Dizard and Brendan Powell. We've had a lot of success over the years, but, but with that many horses, we get disappointment. He takes it on the chin. It's not easy if you're in this game. That's what you have to, you have to understand, and you have to really enjoy the good days because, you know, there are disappointments. Well, you've got to have trust, haven't you, really? I mean, I'm, um, uh, I'm still working quite hard in business, so I'm not, not here as much as I'd like to be, so you've got to have the trust, really. He will tell you the truth. It sometimes can be a kick in the teeth, but that's that's racing, isn't it? John owns many horses trained at Ven Farm and has gradually built a strong string over the years. It must be a good um, 15 years ago. Funny enough, I was in the syndicate and uh, got chatting to Colin and he said, you ought to have your own horse, really. So uh, it went on from there. So how much money John had and thought we'd have a bit of that. <laughs> Does as he's told. It's very important that owners do as they told. <laughs> Here are John. They're, they're coming up, John. John. Amarillo Sky and Slate House. Then Elixir to Nuts and Oscar's Elite. Non stop. Next time, Oscar's Elite will beat that. Great horse. The next time up, especially if I don't put them together, that's a strong piece of work. As the final prep work is completed for the festive runners, the team starts to focus on the races, but something unexpected happens that impacts heavily on the hearts of everyone at the yard. And some sad news in the world of horse racing this morning. Q Card, the multiple grade one winner for Colin Tizard, has died at the age of 16. The popular chaser won nine grade ones in a glittering career taking prize money of well over a million pounds. He was walking along and Hamir was riding him and he had a heart attack, poor boy. So many well wishes and that about him as well. He's got a huge following, so it was sad. It's been huge in our yard, you know, paid for a lot of the improvements we've done over the years, put us on the map. You never go horse like a cute bird again. I'm lucky enough to go that horse. No, Q Card was an exceptional horse. Q Card, down to the last, hold your breath. He's over, and they're miles clear. A seventh grade one for Q Card. Changes from a point to point yard to a little training yard into um, to where we are now. 
Never forget it. Tremendous style. In the history of racing, there's not been many horses that have done what Q cars have done. He went from being a real happy horse and he didn't suffer, and you know, he'll, he'll be long remembered around here. It's Boxing Day at Kempton. Joe is preparing for the feature race of the day, the King George. He speaks to jockey Brendan about their tactics for the race. We can just hit a third in that pocket down the paint. Yeah, yeah and ride him to finish his race. Yeah. And nick as much as we can. This year, Joe's hope of winning the King George comes in the form of El Dorado Allen. He's an outsider, and he'd have to put up a serious lifetime best to win it. He's pretty good at the moment, this boy is. Might not be good enough, but he's pretty good. El Dorado Allen has previously shown good form against this year's contenders. But El Dorado Allen has made most here with Brendan Bow to win the Betfair Denman. He beat Hitman in the handicap in the Holden Gold Cup last year. He's, he's got form with the horses. Here comes El Dorado Allen again, and El Dorado Allen pulls it out of the fire. You get a bit biased, but if I don't, I shouldn't be doing it. You don't sort of make a case for your own horse, it's a bad job. He will run his race, and, and that gives him a great each way chance. Everybody wants to get their position, so it's, there's a lot of hustle and bustle at the start. It's not an easy race to ride in, you know, you've got to be really positive to get your position. And when I'm watching the race, I watch it on my own. Until the result, I'm very nervous on these big tracks. It's, uh, it's quite nerve wracking sometimes. And they're off for the Grade One Labyrinth King George, and they race over three miles and 18 fences. And it's Frodon who will have the lead. Frodon over the open ditch to a Hoy Senor on the inside. Me, stood off with that. A slight mistake by the Grey Eldorado Allen into the on the turn, which takes them towards the back straight, and Frodon has the lead. Next is Hitman with Eldorado Allen the Grey up against the inside rail as they make the turn inside the final two miles of the Labrooks King George. In fifth is Brave Man's Game, followed by Eldorado Allen who's on the inside of Hitman and then Miller's Bank and then Envoy Allen who's last of the nine. And so through the starting point and through halfway, Eldorado Allen and Hitman followed by Miller's Bank and still waiting with the back of the field. They go into the back straight. Dorado Allen begins to labour midway through the race. You're a loser right now, but... It's Eldorado Allen and the back marker on Bois Allen as they go now over the first one, taken down the back straight. Well, you stay, you know, you, well, yeah, they are getting that, but you might stay on from there. Long press a slightly out. Ahoy Senor in fourth. Royal Pigai is driven in fifth. Three lengths away. Eldorado Allen is now in sixth, then Hitman in seventh. As the field for the Labrooks, King George, make the turn for home. No, it's Harry and um, Charlie Deutsch. Of them wins, of them wins. On the near side, Brave Man's Game. They've now gone eight lengths clear of the rest. A private duel between Brave Man's Game and Lord Rete. And Brave Man's Game begins to win the duel as he jumps the 18th of final place. Down in second is Lord Rete, who blood will so see that his rider is Brave Man's Game. It's mixed emotions for Joe. El Dorado Allen finishes fourth, giving owner John Romans a positive result, outrunning his odds. Oh boy. But for Joe, it's the winners that count. There is one last chance for Boxing Day success, though, in the last race of the day, with an underdog named Bob Bally at 40 to 1. Last one coming in now. And there are four of the Labrooks fan zone, your team, your game, handicap hurdle. Brendan starts the race positively, holding Bob Bali in a solid position midfield. Then towards the inside is Bob Bali scanning back. For an entire lap, Brendan and Bob Bali comfortably hold their position. He just settled, he picked the bridle up again, eh? He's racing with that one as they go around the turn. 
There's lots of horses travelling, but so are we. As they approach the final turn into the home straight, Brendan makes his move with his sights set on the winning post. Whether he gets home on this ground now, but he does try, doesn't he? Two lengths away, Paul Barley will go into the turn, racing in fifth. JBY is now in sixth. Oh, he's still got a chance of being in the first four now. He's running a race, whatever happens again, isn't he? Go on, you little sod. Staying on for Barley. He's in four, and then isn't he? Theatre Glory down towards the final two flights of hurdles, and Grey Dawning has taken the lead. He was not oh, good at the second last, but he's now got an advantage of three lengths he's over been. Storm Dennis, he's trying to rally on the near side, Theatre Glory. Over on the far side, the Bombalist and then Paul Barley oh, is sword. continuing to stay on. Oh, he's now second. He's coming, he's coming. He's at the final oh, point. Man. His lead is down. To win that little oh, something. Oh no, but well done, you. Oh. He deserved to win that the little. Who did, did he? God. Poor Bally's just a lovely little five year old who won four last year and just just doesn't know when to, to stop trying, you know, and gave us, it gave us a bit of excitement, you know, ran a blinder, so tough for them. Right. Cheers, Bert. Good day. Um, second, a third, and a fourth. And they've all run beyond their sort of odds and beyond what we thought today. So they've run really well, which is which bodes well for, for going forward for the second half of the season now. Yeah, big day with a big breakaway tomorrow. Hopefully he seems in really good nick. So if he runs like these horses have, then he's got a big each way chance. It's the following morning, with just a couple of hours before Joe travels to Chepstow for the Welsh Grand National. This year, the race has added significance as Coral, the event sponsor, have opted to name the race in memory of Kim. It was a lovely touch from Coral to run it in her memory. Mum and Dad really appreciated that they were doing it. Welsh Nationals, we, we were lucky we had horses that it suits and, and you know, we've been lucky enough to, to win them and, and be competitive in them and hopefully we'll have our day in it again. Very good friend of mine, Kim. Yeah, she's very, um, very sadly missed. We were, we were very, very good friends. Just full of fun. It would be lovely for the, uh, for the yard to win her sponsored race. In today's race, the Welsh Grand National, Joe is running a horse called the Big Breakaway, and today he is accompanied to the race course by his father. Colin. Yeah, he's massive. Go, go back a couple. Bid three. It's become a winnable race. Yeah. You know, it's Ideal. for big, strong, staying chasers. To win those type of races, you've got to be on the, your very best form on the day. It's all about the, the big day, and everybody, everybody is trying to, to win those huge races. That's what it's all about. Go on, jog him on, jog him on, jog, jog, jog. They're freezing their tits off, half of them. It's a Welsh National, isn't it? It's called Welsh National. It's always competitive. Um, it's going to be a fair old slog. Um, but hopefully it'll run well. Good luck, Joe. Top man. Cheers. Just before the race, Joe gives jockey Brendan one final piece of advice before giving him the leg up. So don't be afraid to, like, to, to gallop and pass first and, and yeah. get the old muscles warmed up yeah. and then trot him round if you want to at the start. And, yeah, yeah. But it'll be worth it, because I think it'll... I'm alive at the straight the last time. Start is ready for them, the flags are raised. And they're off for the Coral Welsh Grand National of 2022, run in memory of Kim Gingell. And the big dog in the nose band then on the inner is prominent as they arrive at the first of 23 scheduled fences. The big dog and the two amigos and the real Oaks push the early pace along with Joe Tizard's the big breakaway is alongside he, red cap on the far side as they turn down the back. That's fine there, isn't it? He's given his ground away there, but he won't give nothing away down there. It's a straight line, isn't it? 
and it's the two amigos from the big breakaway with the red cap is a close third as they freewheel into this next left hander yeah you got to choose this morning where you wanted to be is there's ideal isn't it the two amigos runner-up in the race 12 months ago with the big breakaway at his quarters the big dog against the running rail and fellow irish raider regina Traconis and the blue silks as they arrive at fence eight the first of a line of five up the straight the two amigos in the maroon narrowly to the big breakaway on the near side. Cyclop made a juddering mistake there. Next fence brings them to the end of their first circuit in the Coral Welsh Grand National. The big breakaway, the nose bound of the big dog on the inner. So they prepare to meet rising ground and they make the run now towards the first of the fences in the back straight once again. And it's the two amigos who leads the big breakaway and the nose bound of the big dog. As the leaders press on towards fence 13, the two amigos hopping over in front. They're not guaranteed to stay. They're heading for the last mile in the Coral Welsh Grand National. It's the two amigos from the big dog, the big breakaway with the red cap. They've got five more fences left to jump. The two amigos with the big dog's nose bounded head just second. The big breakaway bustled up alongside him. The galloping bear in the raw blue has put his nose up into fourth. Trucker's Lodge poised on the inside. There's a big break then to ask me early, a musical slave. Quick wave has been uh, pulling up. Fortescue is continuing to toil on, but it's the two amigos on towards five out. Narrowly to the big dog who's coming up to have a crack at him under his Walter Bird. And they make their way now towards the last of the ditches. This is four out. Heading now towards the second last. It's the two amigos very pluckily. More fluid. Come on, man. Still got chance. Here we go. They've got one left to jump in the yeah, middle now. On, it's the two amigos. The big dog on the near side. The big green yeah, yeah. snapping at the hills. The two amigos. Is this his day for destiny? The big breakaway is staying on pathway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Determination, and this year it's his turn. The two amigos wins the Coral Welsh Grand National. The big breakaway is second. Second. Well done, Bert. Well done, Bert. He didn't do nothing wrong, did he? Nothing wrong. Nothing wrong. I I'm hurt. I'm hurt now. But I, w I will, I'm, it's already starting to sink in that he's ran his heart out and I'm chuffed with him, but it won't be until later on tonight that I can really sort of say, oh, well, he's ran a blinder and I'm chuffed to bits with him, but seconds, seconds nothing, you know. It's no, we're in a, we're in, like, nobody remembers the second, so. The most frustrating thing, really, is it the fact that you know we've got these horses ready to run? And obviously, with cancellation of the races, it's just frustrating. It's a shame the horse is ready to run. January is a is a long, hard month. It does take its toll a bit. There is a lot of pressure in racing. It can be tough. We're in the height of the season, and it's full on. And I expect every horse to to run well. And if they don't. They're disappointed.